White Wolf on Atigan here at Ways of the Wild Institute in Vermont. And it is October, mid-October, year 2013. And, uh, well, you can see we're having extremely mild weather. Um, so I decided to come over here behind uh, the Institute and um, come back to an old shelter I built. Uh, let's see, four years ago, it was November of 2009, and uh, it was the uh, Half Earth Shelter that I built and filmed and then uh, put on the, uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, there was two parts to it, um, and that video has been uh, viewed by thousands of people, uh, tens of thousands of people actually. Uh, and spread all over uh, the internet. Uh, many different, uh, many different sites uh, embedded that video. So it was uh, quite popular, to say the least. And I believe it was quite popular simply because of the idea itself. Um, the idea of building a shelter uh, partially underground and using the earth as a means of uh, insulation. Um, and also the fact that the shelter could be made uh, practically invisible. Um, and, you know, I believe uh, also that, you know, just the idea um, of being able to build a primitive shelter with all primitive materials using the earth as uh, a solid uh, base, base that has, uh, you know, um, the construction of all your walls, really, um, except for a front wall, built into a hillside, and then having uh, your top, uh, which is primarily made of uh, trees, a um, bunch of uh, uh, slash, you know, branches and uh, mosses and stuff like that, and then taking the dirt that you dug out and then piling it on top, and then covering that with uh, more uh, uh, forest floor debris. And then, you know, just the sheer potential of that, being able to add uh, more modern uh, tools, uh, more modern materials to that, and, um, you know, really build, um, well, then have, you have something uh, that's well known today, like the hobbit holes, right, that you see in uh, Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. And people have actually built hobbit holes in many areas uh, of the world and live in them full time. And so again, you know, but the hobbit hole itself is actually built typically on top of the ground. Some of them are built into hills. Um, and then uh, the tops of them are, of course, covered with uh, soil and, uh, you know, vegetation grows. Uh, so what I wanted to do, just do this uh, short little video to show you um, the Hapford shelter. Now, I've built a number of these, but this is the one that I filmed. This one was actually a test shelter. Uh, for the video. So I've waited four years to come back here and film this. And I know there was some discrepancy with uh, a lot of skeptics when they first saw the video, um, you know, as to how well it would actually stand up. Well, we're going to take a look at that right now. Four years later, from 2009 to 2013, almost to the month, and I have not touched this shelter, no maintenance whatsoever, in four years. So let's take a look at that shelter, and let's take a look at the integrity of that shelter in four years with no maintenance, and see what it looks like. So, as you can see, it just simply looks like your typical northeast forest. But you're looking at the roof of the Hapra shelter right there. So, for those of you who uh, did not see the original Half Earth shelter video, um, I 
put the uh, link uh, in the description of uh, this video so you can uh, go back and check it out. But uh, it is built in this uh, hillside. And here we have the door. This is uh, the part of the front wall. The rest of the, the wall is buried, for those of you who remember. Where I've just recently watched the other one. A uh, big question, of course, is will this roof still support my weight? After all, it's been sitting here in the very, very wet northern green mountains of Vermont for four years without anything done to it. Well, let's take a look. see the door for the shelter is right down here and this is the entire roof of the shelter that I'm walking on bouncing on okay nothing's collapsing four years in the wet climate the green mountains rain deep snows all winter followed by torrential rains all spring, hardcore storms throughout the summer, and then the rains that come back in the fall, all right? The integrity of this roof is still good. Now, if I were to want to utilize this shelter, it is October, we've got all these fresh leaves down from the deciduous trees that have shed. Um, what I would do is I would just go around and I would just get some of the branches, fashion up a rake, and rake tons of leaves and just pile those leaves on top of here. Um, because the roof itself obviously is still in really good condition as far as uh, structural integrity. So I would just need to beef up the insulation. Um, yes, over four years, four autumns, you know, you have all the leaf debris that builds up on here, but still, if I was going to stay in here, I would want to use the leaf debris this year that's all around here and really stack it up nice and thick. And uh, that would assure me a really um, good quality roof to keep the inside of the shelter dry the rest of the autumn and all the way through winter. Now, of course, there should be another question. Is the shelter dry inside? And you can see how long this has been sitting here. I mean, this is completely grew into the land and the land grew into it. All the heavy moss growing on top of all the logs. Looks like it's been here forever. But the inside, is the inside dry? Well, let me see if I can put this camera on uh, night shot and we'll find out. All right, let's get inside here and take a look. As you can see, it is indeed dry in here. You know, I thought this thing had a light. Uh, hmm, let's see here. Light shot. Yeah, I could have swore this thing had a light on it. I don't know if this is showing up or not. I hope it is. But yeah, anyway, as you can see, hopefully, uh, 
yeah, the, the ground down here in the very bottom is completely dry. And the old, uh, the old fire pit is over in that corner. And the shelf is, again, hopefully you can see this. I can't see it too well on my screen here. But the shelf is straight ahead there. Uh, so you got the, uh, uh, the bottom, and the fire pit's over there, and then the sleeping shelf is elevated up, uh, up here. So, if I were to want to utilize this shelter, again, I would beef up the uh, insulation on the uh, exterior of the roof with all the fresh uh, autumn leaves. And then I would put about, well, I would shove as much uh, leaf debris, dry leaf debris inside here on the, on the sleeping shelf and even down on the floor here as possible. Um, I bet you I could easily get, uh, get about four, four and a half feet of uh, thick leaf debris insulation in here. And over in that corner, which again, I don't know if you can see or not, um, the old fire circle that's over there. All you really need to use that fire circle for is hot rocks. So you could have a fire outside your shelter. And get yourself some football size rocks and then put them in that fire until they're glowing red and then using a, uh, a shovel or some other rocks or some uh, uh, some logs that you can uh, rope together and then uh, roll the uh, hot rocks on and throw those down in that fire hole down in that corner and you can uh, close your uh, shelter door up here in the winter time with uh, birch bark or more poles. Ah, there we go. And uh, and those uh, football sized rocks, you know, you get about uh, five of them in there. They will glow red and uh, they will heat that shelter up and they will keep you warm all night long. And you don't even have to worry about smoke. Again, just make sure that the, uh, the leaf debris, you know, you build a, uh, a rock wall around the fire pit, like actually is in there, uh, so that the hot rocks don't touch the leaves because they will combust eventually. And so, you've got the half earth shelter. The roof is sloped. That was another question in the first video. The roof looks flat. Well, maybe in the video it looks flat, but this is on a hillside. And this roof is sloped this direction. Um, and so the roof does not hold water. And we've been having lots and lots of autumn rain so far. Uh, the ground is wet, very wet. And the inside of there is dry. So, all in all, the shelter is still in good structural quality. Okay, so with a little bit of insulation work, um, you know, beef up that roof insulation, stuff the inside of there with all this, uh, all this fresh insulation from uh, this year's autumn drop. Um, you know, get yourself uh, some more rocks to reorganize that uh, fire pit down on the corner. Uh, have yourself some nice uh, football sized rocks out here by your uh, outside fire and you could spend the winter in there if you needed to. Uh, you would, again, you would not have to worry about uh, smoke. And anybody who has done any type of uh, primitive camping uh, and primitive uh, lifestyle explorations and living will understand that you can cook on hot rocks, uh, straight on the rocks or in pots. So you don't even need to 
have a fire inside. You can just use the hot rocks and have your fire outside. Um, because really, if you get those hot rocks warm enough before night sets in, and you've got like five of those, and they're glowing red, and you put them over in that corner, you don't have to worry about your fire outside dying. Those hot rocks will keep you warm in that shelter all night long. Um, and during the damp periods, where it's just very humid and very damp, again, you can use those hot rocks to help dry out the dampness inside your shelter, because again, it is in the earth. And you do not have wooden walls, you have earthen walls. Um, so, if you're in really damp areas, like we are here in the Green Mountains, uh, you know, dampness will build up in the shelter from time to time. But, by putting in the hot rocks, leaving your door open, you know, it will end up baking that humidity right out of there. Uh, and give you a nice, dry, cozy shelter. Alright, so, uh, you know, I just wanted to keep this simple and quick. Just wanted to get back to this uh, old shelter four years ago, built and uh, take a look at the integrity, show you guys how well it has stood up to the northern mountain Vermont winters um, and summers and the rains. It's in really good shape, just needs a little bit of insulation work, fashion up a new door, good to go. All right, this is White Wolf on Atsigan here at Ways of the Wild Institute in Vermont, and I thank you for watching, and I thank you for your continued support, waysofthewildinstitute.com. Come visit us. Take care.